Hey there folks, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to the farm. We are moving and shaking again today. So we've got Frank back here running the Caterpillar 953 and we're clearing out some trees. We're gonna make a bigger pond. So there's a pond right here, a small pond, and we're gonna clear out these trees and we're gonna put a dam directly right here. This morning, we've already been working outside. We got a laser, we shot the grade of how this pond needs to be. We've got places marked, like that white spot right there. That's where the top of the dam needs to be. We're gonna to build a dam across here. This may be a two-part series or maybe we can cram it all into one video. If we do, it's going to be a little bit of a long video. We're going to have some fun today building a pond on the Stony Ridge Farm. All right? Woo! <laughs> So let's talk about this in a little more detail, what we've got going on. Frank has already been over here. He's pushed down a nice big maple here. We're gonna push all these trees up here on the side of the field, and I'm gonna cut out what I need to use for saw logs. So we'll have probably a good saw log out of that maple, probably a couple logs out of this poplar, and then there's a bigger poplar right over here. So pretty good lumber. We'll put it up in our lumber pile and we'll have the sawmill guy come out and cut that up sometime once the weather cools off. My sawmill guy uh, runs a portable sawmill. He charges about 50 bucks an hour to get out here and cut the lumber. And he's 86 or 85 years old, something like that. He's been doing it for years and years, like 45 years, but he won't work if it's over 90 degrees because it's just too hot for him. So that's what's going on. We're gonna flood a lot of this area back in here but we're leaving the trees so that we have fish habitat so all these trees over the years will die that's just it they're going to die and they'll fall apart into the water or whatever this is not a fish pond so much as a watering spot for our cattle so really the main goal here is to have a watering hole for our cows and let's show you the current pond situation what we're gonna really do if you follow the farm vlog is we're trying to slow water down that comes off of this hillside. And this is the pond that we have right here. It's pretty small. It's probably the size of like two of those loaders. You could probably park four cars in there if it was a parking lot. So it's hard to give stuff scale sometimes on YouTube, but this is big stuff. That is a probably 55, 60 foot tree. And we've got a couple nice big 100 footers right there. Big trees. Let's watch them drop. baby woo <laughs> love watching these trees smack hit the ground so we didn't get a twofer and the worst possible scenario is presented itself right here <laughs> That big tree, and this thing is huge. This is a huge tree. You, it, the camera really does it no justice. Got wedged up in the fork on that other tree. Woo! Hopefully Frank can take care of that. We've been out here for about 15 minutes and all the trees are boop, 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 gone. So Frank came over probably three months ago and we cleared off this area right here. It was all brushy and covered with stumps and stuff like that. So a lot of work's gone on power line has been moved so the power line used to go through here and we had to wait until the power line got moved before we built this dam. So what you're seeing Frank do here is these trees are on the other side of the creek. In other words they need to be dropped and drug up here and there's a big gully we're gonna throw the trees over into so we're gonna push them off in the gully. Frank's I guess gonna start working this stump over this way so he can twist it off of that fork right there. There she goes. The next process here is Frank will grab this with a chain and pull them all up here 
and once I cut the lumber out that I want, we'll roll them off over the hill. We are not gonna waste these big pretty logs. No sir, awesome stuff. This dirt right here will be pushed in, and again, we probably have about a 100 yard dam to build. We're gonna build it wide enough to drive the gator across, but probably not wide enough to drive a truck across. The water level is gonna be about right there. So we're gonna have about a six and a half foot deep pond. So we'll periodically come back here, check on them, update you on progress. We'll toss a drone up in the air and we'll get you a little before and a little bit after. It's gonna take this thing probably four days to fill up once we get the pipe in. We'll give you details on the pipe. We'll talk about all this fun stuff. So here we are in the afternoon, six hours later. These are all the trees that Frank had to knock out of the way. I've still got to grab the chainsaw and get the saw logs cut out of that so he can push all the debris over in the hole over here. He has probably moved, gosh, I don't know how much dirt. It's so, so much dirt. And what he's doing is kind of curving this around. He's pulled dirt from over here. We've got a couple loads of fill dirt that we dug out over on the other side of the farm. So first thing in the morning, we're gonna hit that. We're gonna go grab that fill dirt with a dump truck. I gotta pay a dump truck guy by the hour to haul that stuff from one side of the farm over here, right down to here and build this pond. It's gonna be awesome. We've just about reached where we need to be. And the way we graded this all out was with a laser. So we set a laser up and we decided where the water level needs to be, where the pipe needs to be. Everything has been marked. This is the mark for the end of the dam right here. And basically the water is going to be about six foot eight or six foot ten deep. So it's going to be just over my head. So if we were to want to make it a nice swimming hole for living good old country life, we could do that. He did uncover a spring over here. In other words, the uh, water's just bubbling out of the ground. We'll take you and show you that. But this little swampy pond is going to turn into something super duper beautiful. It's grading out nicely. Let's go over here and we'll check out the water that's just bubbling out of the ground. It's a spring. And oftentimes when you're running a loader like this, you'll hit a spring and water will just start bubbling out of the ground. So that'll help feed the pond also. Once this gets full of water, I'll give you a better definition. So you'll have to come back for a future video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. This is some pretty cool stuff. Pound that like button for me, guys. If you like this kind of video, if you like this kind of country living, it's good clean living. Here is our original little pond and it's gonna cover this entire area right here. It's probably gonna be close to eh, a little over half an acre or so maybe a little more. This is where the water is just bubbling up out of the ground. And you can see right there. About 45 minutes ago when I first came down here, that thing was just gushing water. And if he ran over it with the loader right now, it would still continue to gush water. That's cool stuff. I like that kind of stuff. It's interesting to me. You can see here how he's building up the dam to fill in all through here.
it's chainsaw time. We're gonna use our Husqvarna 460 Rancher. Love this saw, great saw. It's my go-to saw pretty much, my everyday chainsaw. We're gonna use some protective gear and we're gonna be using this cool gas can that I've shown in previous videos. This is also a Husqvarna gas can. You have your bar oil on this side, your mixed gas on that side. You've got a place to store your files and tools and you also have a place in here to store more tools and goodies so very very handy this thing is pretty neat you just put it in the spout and it slips back this is a safety can but they fixed the pain in the butt part so you just slip that right down inside the gas tank of your chainsaw and when once the fuel hits that level right there it automatically stops really awesome the oil container does not do that but really cool i'll show you all right flip our husky up open her up here and you don't have to fumble around with a gas cap this is really neat I'll put a link down in the video description this is my favorite awesome gas can so it's filling up right now when it gets done filling up it'll just automatically stop boom done no spill no mess now for bar oil <laughs> guaranteed to spill bar oil guy right here we just loosen this little cap it's a little small cap right there and it has a vent so it doesn't go glug 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 and you can fill up your bar oil awesome awesome Husqvarna gas can super duper cool there will be a link down there in the video description I cannot say how much I recommend this it's really really tough and it works so before we fire up the chainsaw and everything we're gonna go down here and we're gonna talk to you about these logs these are poplar logs and there's a big, nice, pretty maple log. We want to make sure that we can get the optimum amount of lumber out of this log. And I'm going to kind of walk you through what we've got to do. We've got our Milwaukee measuring tape here. I wish I had some of that old Milwaukee. We might get into that after this. Uh, so what we got to do is we got to measure this log and let's just look at this log right here So you can see this is an unusable portion. It's arched right there So we can only use it from about there all the way down to there See it's kind of a knob right here in the middle also so we will cut I'm gonna say it's gonna be a 12 to 16 foot section out right here Then we will abandon this little crook this little bent spot and we'll go down here that's one single log and we'll cut another 12 to 16 foot section out of it now with our maple it's going to be a little bit different it's got a lot of limbs and stuff on it and we're going to get some eight foot cuts and we're going to get some 12 foot cuts maybe maybe what i'm thinking is we might get all eight foot 10 foot or 12 foot cuts but we want to do this normally in eight or 16s here on the farm because we can take a 16 foot board and cut it into an eight foot board and use it so we want to think about dimensional lumber what size we're going to use to build stuff and what we're going to use this for so maple we might use to build cabinets or furniture or flooring or whatever poplar is really really soft wood so we'll probably use that for like the side of a barn or something like that we're going to go up here and we're going to mark this and I'm going to measure it and mark it. I'll show you how we do that. So we're going to teach you a little something my old buddy Eustace Conway showed us up in the woods in a vlog not too long ago. What we're going to do here, got a handful of sticks. Use what's available to you. There's sticks everywhere out here. We're going to measure. So we're going to take our first stick and put it right here at the spot where we're going to make our first cut. And we want to measure 16 feet from that first cut. So we're going to take our awesome measuring tape out here. We'll measure out our 16 feet, so that's 8 foot. We're actually only going to get a 12 out of this one. So right here is the 12 foot mark, and we're going to put our stick at about 12 foot 3 or 12 foot 4. And that way we get a nice cut out of this log. And we can continue up the log, and we're going to get another 8 foot cut if we want it. But the log kind of narrows down to about that big, so we really don't want that. We'll get one cut out of this. All right, we're all marked up where we want to be. We'll take our chainsaw and we'll go down through and go deet, deet, and just mark it with a cut. We have head protection, ear protection, eye protection, leg protection, steel toe boots for foot protection, and we should have gloves on for hand protection, but we don't have gloves on today. So what we're gonna do, this is the first time we started this Husky in, I'm gonna say about a month. It's been hot outside. Haven't been using the chainsaw as much. We'll give it a few pumps and we'll Give her a tug, see how she fires up. I love my Husky saw. I am no 
saw expert and I don't subscribe to brand loyalty. We have steel saws, we have Husqvarna saws, we have holes Forma saws, we have all sorts of saws. So let's fire this dude up, see what happens. What we're gonna do first is go down and mark where we've got our sticks and that way we know where to cut and we're actually gonna go to the next log and do that too. So we can't just leave our sticks on there as we cut it because they'll just fall off. So we gotta mark with our chain. Cool? Contact. We're gonna let that saw warm up for just a minute before we start whaling on it so that it lasts. safety for a second. So what I'm getting ready to do here is I'm getting ready to cut this stump off of this. The opposite of if the tree was in the ground. So this stump is liable to roll back. So you got to watch that and make sure the stump doesn't roll back. You might have saw on this cut right here, I made a little bit of a cut. I saw my gap closing in on the top of that saw. So I went up underneath it and I cut it from the bottom. Let's see if this thing jumps up. I'm not so sure it will but it may. So you saw the saw right there try to kick back on me as it split open. We've got it cut. All we got to do is hook our chain to it and drag it on out of here. We'll start working on the maple. That's a little bit of detail on how we decide what logs are used for saw logs and what logs are used to push off in the woods or for firewood. There's some big logs in there, buddy. Whew. All right, so we got to move on to the maples directly behind you. Whew. That's it. Half hour and we're done. <laughs> so stay tuned for part two of <laughs> the pond build here. We'll get you some footage. We'll get some before and after footage and we'll build upon this probably get Maybe two more videos out of this right here. Maybe just one. We're waiting on the pond water to raise up. Still got a lot more cutting to do. We'll explain all of it to you in the next vlog. Guys, thanks a lot for joining me here on the Stony Ridge Farm today. It's hot, it's bedtime, and it's time for an old one of these. <laughs> See you next time on the Stony Ridge Farm, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget, pound that like button on your way out the door and subscribe. Woo!